Welcome to the Eduonics Introduction to Closure course. Let's just take a minute to introduce the course. Closure is a very terse language. What this means is that a very small amount of closure does a lot. To learn closure well, we can master smaller skills so that we can build up with those small skills we have mastered to get a good result quickly. Emphasis will be on conceptual understanding and looking at small blocks of closure code and unpacking them carefully. So we will have a strong emphasis on this conceptual basis of closure. What does it mean to say that closure is a Lisp dialect? We will discover that Lisp is a conceptual design basis for languages implemented in the core Lisp, but in its variants like closure, and how Lisp is very close to a theoretical underpinning of functional languages known as the Lambda Calculus, and how Clojure comes very close to implementing the Lambda Calculus. Also, what are Clojure abstractions, a very high-level concept inside the design of Clojure. We will gain a good understanding of Clojure core syntax, focusing on the core syntax of forms, special forms and symbols, macros and functions. We will look at closure data types. We will understand how closure is not an object oriented language in any way. It's a fully functional language, but it still has data types. As well as its basic constructs of lists, vectors and sequences, we will see how the function is a core data type, a function literal. Then we will look at closure's higher order functions like map and filter. We will look closely at closure data structures and how they relate to the core closure abstractions. What does it mean to have an immutable data type and why is that important? Inside the conceptual basis of a lambda calculus, we will see how closure allows you to perform bindings on types where you can have bound and unbound types. We will go through functional programming in closure, how you define and create functions, how data flows in, out and through functions, and how you can work with macros to control that data flow. Then we will look at the important concept of functional composition, how you can create a global data flow by composing functions, and important functional programming tools such as recursion, how they are implemented in Clojure, as well as going into Clojure's core functions and macros. We will look at the important principles of concurrent programming as it applies to Clojure, why concurrent programming is needed, and how Clojure implements it via its memory model and its basic concurrent types, atoms, vars, agents and refs. And we will look at the various contexts where would you use an atom as opposed to a ref. We will look at Clojure's key concurrent package, core async, and this idea of a closure process and emerging trends in concurrent programming, such as lightweight threads and containerization. How you can work with this idea of a closure process to implement an emerging topic in computer science, communicating sequential processes. We will look at closure in the context of software engineering, how we can use pipelines with build tools such as Gradle to create polyglot JVM language applications that include closure modules, and Lenigen to quickly spin up closure applications. We will look at a translation process where we can take closure code to JavaScript inside a framework known as ClojureScript. We will look at design patterns from software engineering, such as the important idea of a module, how we can create closure modules. We will look more closely at this closure process pattern. Finally, we will look at how we can create closure applications. We can look at how Clojure and Java work together, Clojure and JavaScript work together. We will look at how we can create a simple Clojure REST application and how we can create a ClojureScript REST client for that application.